You got to stand up. You guys got to stand up. Come on. Come on. If you are in Ilawa, Tovui, it's your birthday. Everybody in the family is an October baby. We get like 10 probably in the family <laughs> at October babies. EJ. EJ will stand up for Taylor. Okay. All right. So is this... These, these beautiful people right here, October babies. Okay. Father, we speak your peace and your blessing upon them, Lord, as we talk about, Lord, and we celebrate your faithfulness, Lord, because of the work that you've called us do, to do, but also the work that you're doing in us, Lord. And we celebrate your faithfulness. But Father, for, and, and I impart that upon the October babies, Lord, that you would continue to lead them to greatness, Lord. That you would lead them to the destiny and the plans and the purpose that you put in each of them before they were even in their mother's womb, Lord. Father, we pray for clear revelation right now. We pray that you remove any blinds that may distract them and make them unable to see the prosperous plans that you have for them, Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would empower them, that you would guide them. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would deliver them. And that a Holy Spirit, through the word uh, of, of the scriptures, the word of God, that it would lead, guide, and counsel them and sanctify them as they fulfill your destiny, Lord. And each and every chapter of their life, in the seasons of their life, the phases of their life, they would look back, Lord, and see how faithful you have been, Lord. You have been so faithful to them in so many ways, Lord, and I pray for a profound clarity upon their spirit right now, Lord, that what you did for them and through them in the past, you're just getting started. And you will carry them through, through any trials, through any tribulation, through any kind of persecution. Though the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, Lord Jesus, you, they have the abundant life in you. So we pray for a resurrection of the abundant life, Lord, and they'll pursue you with all of their might. We bless them, we honor honor them and we love them in Jesus name we pray amen 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 amen, amen, amen. <laughs> hallelujah 14 years we have been here because of the Lord and the Lord alone uh, I'm not kidding the Lord knows that I shouldn't have been here uh, there's no way but not just me but for all of us and today we celebrate God's faithfulness and today is really about having people share their stories and to share the testimonies of how God has shown up. And it's not just about how God has shown up, but the work that God is doing each and every one of us. Uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 27, verses 4 through 7, the Bible says as he speaks to God's people, it says, before you, it says, when you cross the Jordan, when you arrive on the other side, make sure that you build an altar. You have to grab stones as you're walking through Jordan. As I part Jordan, the way I parted the Red Sea, you will see stones at the bottom of the river. Grab these stones, and I want you to build an altar. And this altar, this altar is a memorial of my faithfulness and my commands and my destiny and my purposes for you, for your family, and for your nation. And he says that we must recognize God's testimonies, God's faithfulness, God's promises, and God's work. And it must be passed down from generation to generation that there is tremendous amount of power and importance when we speak of God's testimonies. A testimony is a witness. It's a witness of somebody being at a place and they have seen personal experience, personal encounter with their own eyes and their own hearts to say, no, I've seen God move. I've seen God do this. I've seen God come through. I've seen God deliver me. I know that this is what God did. And that has, is supposed to be passed down in our families and in our churches and our ministries for generations. So I want us to understand, and I pray that the Lord, that first of all, he's going to do this, but I pray for us that we receive right now revelation from the Lord. 
in our hearts and our minds that if our view and our approach of testimony is it not in alignment with his word, that we change. I think sometimes we can have a tendency to just view or hear or witness a testimony and, and not recognize the power behind the testimony. That that testimony is actually for you too. And sometimes this could be packages gift wrapped by him for you given through another person and we miss the boat and we miss a gift a blessing from the Lord that had your name on top but perhaps you may have failed to recognize the importance of the testimony of these stories and it's interesting in Deuteronomy 27 he says grab stones and he says I don't want you to work on it I don't want you to clean up the stones. I don't want you to cut the stones. I don't want you to shape the stones. I want it in its natural state. If it's dirty, it's dirty. If it's wet, it's wet. If it's crooked, it's crooked. But grab these stones and put it together and build an altar to my memorial. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, it says that you and I are the living stones. What does that mean? That means you and I are God's witnesses. That you and I exist, part of the reasons why, one of the major reasons why you and I exist on earth is to testify about God. Is to reflect his goodness. It is to preach the gospel, to share the love of Christ for people, for all creation, and for the nations. But the reason why the Lord said not to touch the stones, not to clean it, not to shape it, but to put it in its natural state, and then build the altar. The message was this. It was a reminder for us that what I got you through, it was not by your doing. What I delivered you from is not by your power, nor by your might. The fortunes and the blessings that you have is not because of your wisdom. It's because I give you that wisdom. How you're able to overcome is because I empowered you. God made it very clear to the Israelites, the land I'm taking you to, milk of honey and abundance, and the purposes, I provided that and I will get you there. And that's what these memorials stand for. And so with that in mind, we're going to invite you to testify. Uh, Mapu, if you can, um, is Mapu, or Mapu Noki, if you guys can put on a five minute limit, time limit, Okay, and, and the reason is this, the reason is this, your story matters, your testimony matters, and we want you to share with complete freedom and liberty and power and conviction, but so do other people's testimony matters as well, and we want to give that freedom and that right for all stones to speak. It just means this, we got to be in tune with the Holy Spirit to share what he wants us to share. We have to be careful anytime we share a testimony, which is just a story of how God showed up. And then all of a sudden it becomes a message. And that's no longer a testimony. You start preaching. Preaching is good, but we're not preaching today. We're testifying today about his goodness, about his faithfulness, so that everybody can share with freedom in honor of the Lord and to bless and empower everyone here and everybody have that opportunity. And at the same time, we do want to eat, right? <laughs> we do want to eat. And everybody got stuff to do, so, you know. It's, no, 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 not 30 seconds. Honestly, I know some of you folks uh, can speak for more than five minutes, and it would be worthwhile too. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to take that away. I'm not saying that your, your, your story, your testimony don't matter. It does matter. But here's the beautiful part, okay? All of our testimonies put together, God is saying to us as a body. That's what we cannot miss too. You know why in First Peter... Chapter 2, verse 5, we're called living stones. Think about that. 
There's no life in a stone. Stone has no life. But when we are attached to the chief cornerstone, that being Jesus Christ, all of a sudden we have life. We have testimonies. All right? So we can have freedom, but we also we can have order. And we can celebrate and recognize what God has been doing the past 14 years or even the past year or the past six months. One final instruction before we begin. Don't feel that you, you got to come up here. Don't feel that. Be led. And don't also feel that, well, I don't have anything that I have achieved or accomplished. There isn't a big win in my life this past year. So therefore, I have no testimony. Now listen, testimony is not only about victory. Testimony is equally powerful in sharing your brokenness. Sharing the work that God is forming and, and the process that you're in right now in your life. And, and maybe you didn't cross that finish line. Or maybe you didn't get to the top of the summit of that mountain. Or maybe you, just, you didn't fulfill this, this mission and assignment that God gave you for 2017 or 2018. It, and, and it's left unchecked. Or maybe you've abandoned it. But then you, 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 you've received an awakening in a process. And you go, oh, okay, now I get it. That's a worthy testimony. That's a worthy testimony. So whether if, you've, if the job is done or you're in process or if you've failed miserably and you feel led to share that, come and testify. Come and testify. So who would like to go first? I go first. Okay. Grant? Okay, I know you are. So, what, Grant, won't you come here on the side? Becca, if you can sit in the middle. You and I are going to sit in the middle. Grant, you can sit right, that, right at the edge, the last chair. Yeah, yeah we're going to line them up. All right. Uh, so, who would like to go after Grant? Okay. You can sit next to Grant. Okay, one more. Maybe we're going to eat early today. I don't know. Okay, Rory. Rory, come up, you can sit. So here's what we're going to do so that we, 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 can, we can move the service along and, and have as a flow of testimonies. What we don't want is dead spots. Okay? We want, and it's not about trying to run the service. I'm saying when there's a rapid fire of testimonies, the Holy Spirit ministers to us all. So I, I, the whole point is that we want a flow of the Holy Ghost moving through our lives and through the service. So after Grant, as Grant comes up and you feel led to share, replace his seat. Replace the person who's gone up. Does that make sense? Okay. And uh, Noki, you guys got the clock ready? All right. Grant. And if you go after five minutes, come on, Grant. If you go after five minutes, and then you wrap it up, just wrap it up. We're not going to, you know, gong you. It's not the gong show. Okay? We feel, we really invite you to share your heart. But we also want to honor the time of everyone. Yeah, thanks. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Uh, how God showed up for me is just real simple. It's uh, short and sweet. He showed up big time yesterday. And I was just being obedient to the Lord. Uh, Sage had his fundraiser at Marino yesterday, and um, Becky said, oh, Grant, why don't you drive? But I said, I didn't want to drive. Um, and she goes, no, drive, because you just get so lucky about finding the favor of parking favor in you. <laughs> so I was like, no, no, I don't want to drive. I don't want to drive. Anyway, she goes, well, we got to stop to the bank and get money. So when she stopped, the Holy Spirit said, Grant, jump in that seat. I'm going to give you the parking lot. So what happened? We went over there. I mean, it's, you guys been to those fairs that it is crazy. Like people just, you know, they're animals looking for parking. So we just decided I would just go to the drive through and just go pick up our plates and go eat at a park or something, get away from this crowd. But lo and behold, when I'm driving, I'm coming around, getting ready to get my plate, a car right in front of me, 
right in the front of where, like, there's 10 steps and we're in the event. The car moves out and, oh, look, oh, so it's like, man, you're so lucky, you're so blessed, man, See, I told you to drive, I told you. So I just wanted to share that the Lord loves us all and he keeps promises and he showed ma major favor in that, that little short story, you know, so amen. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Crystal Matsuyama. I'm fairly new to the church. Um, and this is kind of <laughs> uh, new to me, being in front of like a crowd and speaking. But um, I, my testimony comes from before I, we started coming, which was about six or seven months ago. And back then, I was really broken. Um, struggled with depression for many years, had encountered many, many sins before, and then it led into our marriage. Our marriage was on the rocks before we came. And so um, what had happened was one of the discussions that I had with my husband, um, I told him, you know, I don't know about you, but I really believe in God. And before then, we, we didn't have a relationship with God. Um, neither did my husband. His faith was, he didn't know where his faith was. He didn't know who God was. I did, but I didn't have a relationship with him. And so I think at that moment when I declared that I told my husband that I believe in God firmly, it shook the heavens because that moment, things started rolling for us. You know, Kamai, Kamai and my husband met, and then from there, it it led us here a month later. The very first time we showed up here at WMC, oh my goodness, I just like bawled because I felt love from every single one of you. And it wasn't because, I mean, I didn't know you guys. You guys didn't know me. I think it was because God let it in your guys' heart, told you guys that what I was going through was that I needed love the most. And you guys, you know, he delivered. He delivered the love that I needed. I mean, I stand here with true faith in him. Um, I'm all in. And you know what the best thing is, is, is that my family is on this ride with me. We are 100% committed. Um, and it's all because God heard me. He heard my heart, you know. And he is wonderful. He is a blessing in our lives. And he, he keeps on showing up every single day. And it hasn't, the joy word has never stopped since we've been here. And I just want to say amen. amen. Oh, okay. Five minutes, huh? No, no I'm kidding. I'm not going to take five minutes. <laughs> yeah, short version. Very, very abbreviated version. Um, you know, as we were driving over here today, um, the number two popped into my mind. Um, and it's significant because we've been here for two years, my family and I. Uh, we were invited by Berta to um, take part in uh, a celebration of the annual celebration of the church. And so we came and uh, immediately felt welcome, just like Sister had attested to. Immediately uh, felt welcome. Um, we, we know a bunch of you already from the outside, of course, Sally and Becca from, um, from school because EJ and Kobe go to the same school, they're good friends. Uh, the Katoas from before in our days at Olomana, Kenji, same. Um, so we immediately felt welcome and, um, man, the, um, I tell you, the spirit just really got a hold of me from the beginning, personally. Um, Within the first week, I reached out to Ellie and said, hey, is there some kind of uh, accountability that you folks have uh, where, you know, brothers meet one-on-one, -on -one, um, something we used to have uh, back in the Olomana days. And uh, it, it's something that I was really uh, needing. And so Ellie said, hey, you and I can meet. And uh, so once a week for two years, We've been going strong meeting on Tuesdays, having a good discussion in the morning before I go into work. 
Um, and it's really, our discussions have really been guided by the Holy Spirit because he's transformed not only myself, but my entire family. Um, my relationship with my wife, my relationship with God, my relationship with my four blessings. And um, in all the discussions that Ellie and I have had, um, the biggest thing that stood out um, and that he kept reminding me over our discussions is that my obedience and my faithfulness to him have really helped to not only allow me to see the blessings, but to ensure the blessings for our family, for our children, and um, to really start to really pour that foundation for the generations of the Santo Sohana. Um, and I'm going to attribute that, and this was also brought up by Eddie, I'm going to attribute that to um, my dedication, my obedience in the spa, to a life of prayer. So. Really what I'm up here, I'm, I'm just sharing just a glimpse of, of what I've done over the past two years. I've been, um, I, I had spoken to Ellie uh, earlier this week, I was either earlier this week or before you went to your trip, and uh, I told them that, um, you know, I haven't missed a day of spa. Been late a couple times, but uh, two years strong. Monday through Saturday, you can go back and look at all my postings, it's been there. And the growth that I've seen in myself through the postings and even from the brothers' shares have uh, really encouraged me to um, really just take my faith to a whole new level. So I wanna encourage each of you, you know, um, I know sometimes we like to kinda bring up the story, especially us men, oh, I'm not good at doing the spa. Uh, I kind of read. I'm not really good at it. Um, I don't really feel comfortable about sharing with men. Shoot, that was me before. You know, I was in the same place. And um, it's that obedience and that dedication to reading the word, really, really taking in that nourishment and asking the Lord for guidance, asking Him for specific things. Uh, with our family that has led me to this point. And it's only been two years. And I pray for the next two and beyond to be even more spirit-filled and spirit-led. So uh, bless you all. Thank you all. And uh, I got 20 seconds left, so I'm good. Thank you. God is good all the time. So I just wanted to share, it's been on our prayer for my cousins and I here in Hawaii about God's faithfulness in our family in Carson. And so a little bit of history. There's been a division for many years since I've been grown of older cousins and younger cousins. And we see it in our, in our family. Sorry, I'm kind of sick, so I didn't want to. Um, a division in our family with our cousins. Never hung out with each other, never spoke with each other. And um, even when we hang out at family gatherings, it's we're all like younger cousins are in one place, older cousins are in another place. So my cousins and I here in Hawaii, we made a commitment to do a prayer, you know, about our family, really connecting with one another. And it happened this past Sunday, no, two Sundays ago in Carson. I had the opportunity to update my cousins or my whole family about our reunion. And um, <clears throat> me being one of the younger cousins, I thought it was gonna be a bit of a challenge because a lot of them were not receptive. There was one or two that wasn't, but you know, I really connected out to them to really um, show God's love and grace. And after the um, update, all of my older cousins were like, man, that was awesome. You know, I'm so impressed. I'm so, you know, you've grown so much. And I'm thinking, we all adults. I'm almost 35 years old. And they, they still look at me as youngins. But the thing that I love the most, and I think Robin saw that, is we all came together at the end and just started talking story and laughing, even with our aunties and uncles. And we've never done that before, seriously. And I just thank God every day for the um, 
faithfulness that he has in our family. And I know that's the reason why we're coming here or they're coming here to Hawaii for a reunion in 2020 is to reconnect with one another, but most importantly, to keep God, to keep God centered in our family. And so um, that's been a big prayer from my dad, from my Auntie Lama and all of them, seeing us cousins come together as one. Because on my mom's side, it's, it's different. We're all, we all come together no matter how old you are. But my, my dad's side, that's been, a, that's been a challenge is them seeing us as equal, I guess, and so. So that's um, a prayer, that's what I saw in um, God's faithfulness in our family. And we continue to pray that, that God will continue to shape and mold us together as one, as a family, as a unity in Christ. Thank you. Good job. Praise the Lord, good morning. First thing first, I wanna to apologize to Grant for not um, responding to the text he sent out yesterday um, for help, but the, the, the what you call it? The spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. <laughs> uh, do apologize. Um, my testimony is, uh, is, it was Friday. Was it Friday, Mom? Hon? We, lay, uh, we actually had my, my nephew, my wife's nephew, play for Roosevelt, number 11. So the Lord spoke to me, so I, I don't know what I did. My, everybody was distracted. Everybody was doing their own thing. Our electricity was was acting up, so we had my brother-in-law electrician trying to wire all day for the past two days. Finally, hey, give it up, call somebody already. <laughs> on a long run, on a, on a long run, um, the Lord spoke to me, and this was like so clear. So I went into the, the, the get my oil, which was dusted off all the dust. <laughs> so I called my nephew, come downstairs, and I called my wife, hey, come in the front. We're gonna lay hand on my nephew, and we oiled him. And this is like a prophetic act. He didn't know what the heck is going on. So he sat down, everybody was like on their computer, on their phone. So we put away all the gadget, everybody come down, and we started laying hand on Cain, and from his ears to his head, and we pray for a head of protection, and most of all, we pray for the humble spirit, that his spirit, not all about him, but it allow God to, to to show up on in his in his walk in his life, and not only that, we actually started from Muna to Alana to Malachi to Atalani. But believe me, the sp they were like, "No, why? How come? <laughs> Sit down." <laughs> but you know what? It was it was something that we have never done for quite some time. It was something that was being delayed, being distracted. But it was so awesome to just. Sit down and anoint your kids Amen. from time to time with the oil. So I encourage you, parents. Yes. All right? That, that was my testimony. He had a good game. And most of them, and the parents and everybody said, it was the oil. It was the prayer. So God is good. <laughs> um, you guys are not coming? No? They're not led. They're not, they're not led. Okay. Well, you, you better be led. You better be led before this testimony is over. Uh, all right, just real quick. Um, I know for me uh, personally, there's so many ways. It's been, I think, five or six years since um, Pastor Ellie and Becca came into our lives. And um, even prior to that, we were teammates at UH. But, uh, to to be on this walk, it's it's been um, it's, it's been it's been something uh, amazing, you know, special. So uh, learning to bring the kingdom to my family uh, and my business has been a challenge uh, for me uh, walk wise, because that's something uh, I wasn't accustomed to living, where my way of doing things was I had to go get it done. And uh, it's kind of a, like a linebacker mentality. If y'all know football, a linebacker, you find the ball, you kill the ball. That's, that's your only job. And so I've always had that mentality uh, as a kid. And, um, and uh, as an adult, I carry that stronghold with me. It's like, I got to go get it done. And so learning to trust, align my family, my business with, uh, with the kingdom and Holy Spirit, uh, has brought so much peace, uh, not only to myself, but uh, to my relationship with my wife, my relationship, how I father my kids uh, today, uh, being able to uh, now 
uh, disciple people in the marketplace is, uh, is a um, very intriguing thing for me. I, I really don't have all the concepts, but I think that's one of the calling that the Lord has on our lives is he doesn't really, um, I mean, he cares for structure and order, but I think more of obedience. And for me, that, that was for me, was obeying Ellie and, um, and what in the tracks to run on and walk on. And so, so much peace, peace in the household, even when we have heated discussions today, um, I think, you know, when there's no challenge, we, we don't get to grow from it. But I get to approach my wife with honor. Many of you have heard before, I used to, it be like, felt like going to the principal's office all the time, going to talk to my, my own wife, you know? And um, today to, uh, to go there and share my heart and connect here, not just here, uh, it's, it's been an amazing blessing on how to, to, to love on her and love on my kids. And uh, I, I would have never had that if I never came to WMC or, or, or what the Lord, your, you two's obedience to the calling upon your life. So we thank you uh, both. And then also wanted to thank the, uh, the WMC family who's been here standing in the gap for all of us uh, to be able to be blessed by the seeds that you have sown over the years. So we thank you all. To the elders of WMC, we're very grateful as a family uh, to be growing with y'all. And I, I, I believe this morning as I was praying before I came to church, I'm sorry, you got two minutes left. <laughs> oh, okay. This morning is, uh, <laughs> as I was praying, you know, I, I just, God gave me this vision uh, of WMC uh, being a spiritual hospital uh, for so many people. And um, yeah, and so we, we just have to, to obey and, and walk in our greatness and uh, definitely business-wise is great. I'll let my wife share. <laughs> I'll take your extra, no. Uh, we didn't actually, I mean, we had a brief conversation yesterday about about this and then we kind of like we're left to our own um, thoughts and prayers and and time with God and it's funny because when he was talking I was like oh my gosh that's what I was gonna say you know so but I'll just give you a quick background on my story you know I grew up, grew up in a family that um, of plenty you know we we always had shoes on our feet food on the table I went to a private school if I needed whatever I got it I mean it was just it, it money was never an issue it wasn't like we were rich or anything but it was just not something that I worried about and another thing was my dad always taught us that if you wanted something you needed to work hard and if you didn't get it you weren't working hard enough go go at it again and work harder 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 until you get it and then the other thing was we ha we all believed in God in our house but nobody had a relationship with God so he was there but not really there um, so fast forward to um, my marriage and children and uh, about seven years ago, I think was when we started WMC, but it happened to occur right at the time when we were really, really struggling. Danny's business um, had a couple major changes in it and like the bottom fell out. Like our financial uh, situation just went in the tank. And I had feelings that I had never felt before. Things of like, what, I can't put gas in the car? We don't have money for gas? We don't have money for food? What, we can't buy them basketball shoes that they need? Or, I mean, it was, it was very scary for me, as you can see, I'm getting emotional thinking about it. <laughs> and <clears throat> I can remember sitting in First Hawaiian Bank parking lot, looking at the balance of our account, negative 750. Like, what? We have negative money? Like, how is that possible? And anyway, all that to say that um, in, in, our, in our relationship with each other, in our relationship as a family, like learning, I, I kind of think back to my, my dad's work hard ethic, you know, and all that. What he, he his um, intention was nice, was good, but you, you, he, what he was teaching us is really like, you don't need a savior because you can do it, do it yourself. And that's just not true. You need a savior um, because of what life brings you. It's not all rosy and peachy and you always have shoes on your feet. Like sometimes you have a negative $750 balance. And so um, 
my point is that through the course of our family, you know, becoming part of this family here and having such wonderful mentors in you and wonderful mentors for our kids, um, really, I think our, our control and our work ethic has, you know, it started up here and our faith was down here and we've just kind of, we've done this, you know? And, um, so I just want to, um, to just reiterate that we have just grown in faith, uh, in faith in our marriage, in faith in our family. Um, he is at the center of our lives and therefore our family is wrapped right tightly around that and then everything else is, is outside. And so, praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. We got one, we got, well, I just want to tell you, yeah. I would go another 20, 25 minutes to an hour of sermon telling you what the Lord has done in the last five, six years. Not, not just big stuff, big miracles, small miracles, but just miracles in general when, when we got ourselves out of the way when, or when we became one, you know. And what we realized through our relationship, we were growing, but we were growing parallel, not growing together, you know. And, um, and learning to fight. You know, what the, what the devil can't steal, kill, nor destroy, he will distract. And, and so he distracted us to stay here. And, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't like the price of being right. I wanted the price of being a, a blessing. And, and, and I had to take a lot of breaking of my heart. I had to be broken several times. Uh, to really allow Holy Spirit to minister to me in ways that I could exude love when I speak to my wife or when I speak to my kids. I don't know when the last time I spanked my kids. I, I just can't. I can't think of hurting the very thing that I love. And I know that those seeds came from this place. And uh, I love you guys. Thank you. Lord, praise the Lord. All right, let's go, let's go. Who's next? <laughs> Hallelujah, amen. I'm walking up here, a lot of things popping in my mind what to share. Testimonies, good and bad. But um, I'm going to just go what I feel that I'm being led to. So I just want to say right now it's a testimony that I'm here in front of you guys. God is good. I'm going to start from the beginning. Young kids, I was like you guys. Come to church every day, do everything. But when I go to school or anything, I have a different life. My parents don't know about. Then I come home, I beat a good kid. You know, you know how to play the rules. Huh? You got to play them all the way. But I always felt that guilt. Like I'm not doing my part. And like I still feel that guilt at this age. But the only thing is now, I am doing my part. And it's just like Brother Rory said, I got obedient with the spa. I fought pastor for this long time. Like, man, I do, the, I do the daily bread. I do my reading. You know, I, I read a couple of scriptures. That's good. That's reading the word, bro. But maybe I'm not applying it. Maybe I'm not letting it get power in me. But now I am, you know. And I want to tell you, kids, I had a good life because I did it my way. But I could have had a great life if I did it God's way. But it's not too late for you guys, and it's not too late for me. I thank God that he gives me opportunity and chances, and he still loved me and believed me after all the stuff I did. I want to tell you, I did so much rotten stuff, nobody would believe. Only God knows. Thank you, Lord. Some of my family knows some of the stuff, but I was a terrible kid. You know, I was a problem child. You know, I like to cause trouble, do any kind of dumb stuff. But it wasn't until I got in trouble that I changed my life. I still had some anger issues in me that I couldn't control, but God couldn't control and then people that believed in me. So you young kid, you got to listen to the people that love you and believe in you. Even though it's irritating and you're tired of hearing the same old story every time, like the record playing, hey, Dad, yeah, Mom, yeah, 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 come on. I know already, I know already. No, accept it because why? It's going to help you in your life. The reason why I know I'm alive today is because of this one verse. 
Honor your mother and father so you can live long on the earth. If I didn't do that part, I wouldn't be right here in front of you. But God knows the plans that we have. He still, he still doesn't uh, give up on you no matter how much you think you can't do it. And for like me, you know, I never really finally get, I was serious when I was younger, but to really just get lighted on fire again, wasn't maybe till a year ago or a little bit before that, before I asked the Lord, I was praying for the right wife. And young kids, you better pray to God for the right spousal wife, because why? I got the wrong ones and I suffered a lot. I lost a lot of money. I was broke. I was playing the pity party. I was like, I'm a victim. I'm a victim. It was her. It's them. But that's not it. There's two people. And you had the choice. God always gave us the free will to choose the right person. But he said, hey, you're going to live in, you're going to sleep in your bed if that's the one you, you made the decision. You never asked me. But now I'm making the decision with God. And I got the best wife in the world. I'm going to tell you that hands down. This wife keeps me on my toes. I mean, she puts more belief in me than I believe in myself sometimes. I'm like, honey, I read the word more than you. I go in church, but oh. But she said, honey, sometimes I got to watch myself because I'm your helper. I can't overstep your boundary. I always got to remember you're the leader. I'm like, honey, oh, thank you. And then it caught myself. So yesterday, she always told me I'm an onion that's hard to peel, still working on it. And God, you know, thank you, Lord, for giving her patience, because when things happen with my car, I just realized I'm fast to fix my car, get the things done. We came to her car, we left her car outside for three, four months. <laughs> then, and the only reason why we got it fixed, because my battery went down, I called my friend, tried to fix it, and we fixed it. And then they caught me, honey, why do I know what to do when it's my problem? But when it's your problem, I'm like, I didn't even help you. But know that we got it done, her car is fixed, now it's running. But you know, God can use anybody. I'm a living testimony, man. And I'm gonna tell you, God get through great things for me. And uh, I really don't see myself here in the next couple of years. I'm gonna tell you, because I'm gonna be doing something. And you know, I gotta play the game. I can't just be on the sideline. I can't be coaching or cheering. Because a lot of, even you kids, you gotta get in the game and you gotta do your best. But if you ask the best coach in the world and trust him, he's going to give you the place, he's going to give you the wisdom. And what you got to do is, like Pastor Ali still said, no matter who's in authority, you got to respect them. You might not like them, but you still got to give them respect. And you just pray to God about the situation. Let God calm the storm. And a lot of times when you're in the storm, that's where you got to be. And in this thing, God is good. And we'll give you a two out of ten minute person. Oh, I'm going to wait. My sisters, you guys, because they kind of walk, yeah? You guys like the mic? So, 14 years ago, I was 14 years younger, and I moved a lot better than I do now. I didn't have a wheelchair, didn't have a walker, um, but, you know, even though I'm not that mobile, my mouth still works, and so does my brain, and I use both of them very well at work and at church. <laughs> um, but I want to say... Yeah, 14 years has been, wow, 14 years. Uh, I, some of you have two years or five years. I came over when the ship came over 14 years ago. because and, and the way God worked it out is we were actually at Windward Missionary Church. And, you know, listening to Crystal's testimony about how people showed up, I was at a point in my life when I went to that church that I needed to see uh, Jesus in skin, in love, in actual, not just words. A Baptist church, they're very good at teaching you the word, but not so good at showing you love. Um, so when I went to Windward Missionary Church, every time I, I needed something, people just came around me and prayed over me. You know, I had never had that at a Baptist church. Um, they tell you they're going to pray for you, but they never came around and prayed for me. And I was at a point in my life that I needed to see Jesus in the skin. And so anyway, pastor at that church uh, had a stroke. And they brought um, an interim pastor. Well, actually, Brad became the associate pastor. And then I was part of the pastoral search committee that called the pastor that eventually came and took over that church, which I shouldn't have uh, because God gives me this knot in my stomach when something's not good, and I usually follow it. But he gave me that same knot for that guy, but I didn't follow it. I went with the majority, and the majority called him. 
and he was the pastor from H-E-L-L. And I tell the pastor now that's there that the reason we called him was so that, that those people would appreciate you because I'm pretty sure they appreciate you after him. Anyway, that was the pastor that was there, and people started to leave the church. He, I mean, he was, he was different. And, um, and they kept asking me, Millie, how come you haven't left? I said, because well, I'm not there for Dan. I'm there for the Lord. And until the Lord tells me to leave, I'm not leaving. And, pe- and so, you know, the Sunday that I knew that the Lord was calling me to leave was when uh, Dan wanted to be like New Hope. So he started to put up, you know, like how we do with the scriptures come up, except on this particular day when the scriptures came up and I was looking for my scripture in my Bible, he said, don't you just hate it when these Bible scholars come up and they just open the book and they, they, to get the verse? Well, you don't have to do that. The scripture is right up here on the wall, which is dangerous because sometimes what's on the wall is not what's in the word, you know, and, and, and so... I, Right then and there, I knew the Lord was telling me, okay, Millie, it's time for you to leave. And then I was thinking, where am I going to go? Maybe I'll go back to Lanakila Baptist, my old church. Well, that's when Becca and Taylor comes, and she says, oh, Grandma, we're moving. I said, where are you moving to? You know, and then she told me that they were coming here. That's when I found out that Becca and Ellie were coming to take the church in Kanyoi, and I knew the reason God had called me at that time, to leave Mililani is because he wanted me to come here. Because even though Becca and Ellie were coming here, unless the Lord called me to leave Mililani, I wouldn't have come with them. And so it's been a 14 ride. Uh, you know, I mean, I've seen Ellie grow in his preaching from when he first started as youth pastor at Winwood Missionary Church to now. And um, Ellie's, uh, the way God has used Ellie in this church has helped me with my trust issues because I had issues with trusting pastors because I grew up in a church where the biggest hypocrite was the pastor and his wife it was my uncle and my aunt. And so, you know, but, um, and I didn't trust, you know, and, and, and nothing against Howleys, but I don't care for Howley pastors because I thought they was all crooks. And, so, <laughs> and I'm looking at Amanda and Kathy, nothing against you. <laughs> but no, but, um, and so, you know, I had an issue um, trusting, and how I gave to the church depended on how I trusted the pastor. But God taught me that it didn't matter to trust the pastor. I needed to trust him, and he would take care of everything. And how Ellie has, um, how God used Ellie is, we all came to the Lord with baggage, because we all had this religious upbringing in a Samoan culture. And uh, Ellie didn't come that way. He just came as Ellie, and the Lord taught him. And having God teach him, and him being so authentic, and then me living with him and seeing that, you know what I mean, (laughs) made a difference in how I trusted, because really, how you deal with your secular parents or your, 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 uh, a significant other will determine how you're going to trust God and his word and your walking. And that helped me to trust even more. To where, I think I was sharing with Becca, I don't know if I went over my five minutes, but too bad. Anyway, what, what I did was, um, I wasn't sure why God was, you know, I was, it was time for me to retire. And I'm retiring after at the end of this year, so January 1, I'll be officially retired like Isabel. <laughs> but I told my, my doctor, I didn't want to be a crippled retiree, uh, that he needed to try to do something because I want to be able to go travel. I want to be able to have lunch, you know, with my friends. And so um, I can't remember what I, anyway, I was in the Word, and I felt like the Lord was telling me um, that he had a plan for me when I retired. And what that is, is my sisters and I, and we're praying that we'll be more mobile. We have a lot of cousins, dear cousins to us, that don't know the Lord, that live in the mainland. That we, they don't come here as often as we would have the opportunity to go there. But my plan, with God's help, and our being more mobile, which is actually helping right now, is uh, to go visit them and share the word. Because now we don't have to rush back. So um, I didn't tell Paula that, but she knows it now, so does Sina. That that's what we're going to do. That's, that's actually what I plan to do is uh, in my retirement, I will have more time um, to share the Lord, I, you know, with those that I don't see as often because of work. So uh, please pray for us. Uh, I actually have this Chinese herbal 
uh, stuff that I've been doing that helps with my pain. It's called Zang Gu Shui, if, uh, and it works. I mean, it works. And if you'd like to try some, I have some next door. I'm not trying to sell it. I'm not getting a profit. I'm just telling you, it works for my knee pain. It'll work for any pain you have, except the pain that lives with you. That's not going to work. Only Jesus will help that. Thank you. Actually, I started coming steadily here in, when my husband passed away in 2016. And at that time, I, I don't know what Baptist church she went to, but uh, I went to the same church, so I don't know. <laughs> and I don't know what holy pastor she's talking about, because I, <laughs> I had a great holly pastor. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> but uh, uh, Winwood has been here for 14 years, and I've only come steadily after 2016. And uh, because I wanted to be closer to family, but not only am I closer to my blood family, but I also found a new family. So each of you has uh, been a blessing in my life it, since I've been here. But uh, the one thing that I felt that this church was founded on, as any church should be founded on, is the foundation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And my niece, Becca, my dad, one of the things that he wanted in life was to, was to have a pastor in the family. So I guess Becca will have to do, because all the boys never become <laughs> pastors. <laughs> so so thank, thankful for that. So Becca made my father's wish come true. But the one thing that I felt that the church was, my nieces, I see them growing. I'm just so proud of them, you know, and how the Lord has used them. But that foundation, you see that cross over there? That's the foundation that not only I'm sure this church was founded on, but the lives of my nieces and my sisters was founded on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's a foundation for any life. Without that foundation, everything else will fall apart along the way. So one thing also our pastor taught us was keep your eyes on the Lord, not on man, for man will fail you, but God never will. So remember that, you know, things may be rough and so forth, but if you trust the Lord, and my favorite scriptures is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, lean not to thine own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. But you know, in the last few months, um, I've had to claim uh, this scripture. Um, sometimes you don't know what goes on in a person's life, but when you have God on your side, how can you not get ahead. So I think it was Isaiah 41.10, fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will hold you with the right hand of my righteousness. So I've claimed that, knowing that I have nothing to fear, because I have a God that will help me and will strengthen me. And he'll do the same for any of you that's here. So keep your eyes on the Lord. He'll never fail us. And uh, Winwood Missionary, God bless you. May the Lord continue to bless as uh, you not only preach uh, for people to get well, but remember, Jesus is the foundation. Start with him first, and everything else will fall in place. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, my two older sisters. Ooh, I love you guys. Uh, yeah. See, I can walk, so I can come up here. You, you can start the clock on me. Because you never start on them. Anyway, uh, I just thank God for Winwood Missionary. You know me, I in and out, in and out, but I love Winwood Missionary. And I come to fellowship my two sisters, because one scooter, one, you know, uh, cocoa, yeah, so I don't know how long they get. But they're telling me, we don't know how long you get. You better knock it off. But I love my family, and I love the transformation that this church has done upon people I know when you was in that life. And I see your lives are so grounded on the Lord, and my nieces, I'm so proud of them, especially my niece, Becca. Like she said, my dad is so proud and happy that we have sort of a minister in the family, but her husband is the minister. So I've been here from the get-go, yeah? I was the youth pastor, or well, not pastor, but youth leader, and Onoki was in our class. So I'm doing a class at, at the church, at the house, and he comes like, oh, bro, sorry, this is for the youth. I didn't know homie was a youth. I thought he was like 25, but he not said nothing. He just laughed. I go, okay, so at least the next time, check ID. <laughs> But anyway, I just thank God for his life too. And, and my niece, Mapu, you know, the transformation God has done upon all of you guys, especially my children. You know, Joy and I, he was in that life, yeah, that was so, the life I had. But, you know, my kids, I, 
was hoping that would never happen, but I'm so happy for him. I get guys that come to Walgreens go, hey, Sonny, your son, I go, how you know him? Oh, I was in the life with him too. I go, well, he's doing real well. And he know why, because I was going to cut his line, he don't get it together. But I am most proud of my daughter. She's strong spiritually in the family. She always trying to keep us on our toes, yeah. Sometimes I like knock her out, but I thank God that she is solid in the Lord. So she no one's wild like me. I was wild. She's not like that. And I thank God for that. Only Johnny wouldn't go that route. But I thank God and I just love everybody and hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for win one mission out. Look, I still get three minutes, but that's okay. Amen. For the, uh, the prayer dedication. Yeah. Uh, so going back to the memorials, I uh, I had uh, the sasa stick that I carried with me. Uh, I held on to these things as a reminder that God broke this anger and bitterness in disciplining my kids. Then I remember I forget where we were going, but I always kept it in my bag because I always had my bag with me, and every time. I felt like I was going to do something with my kids and go back to the old way. I would grab the uh, sasa stick, the broken sasa stick, to remind me from the Lord, Eli, you no longer a father that way. So it ministered to me. And that's what the memorials are. It ministers to us. Um, I, I used to have uh, these sunglasses that um, Gerald Tomasau, it is a, a businessman and he gave it to me at the conference. I remember he, he, he called me to uh, one of the sunglass shop in Hilton, Hawaiian Village. And he said, Eli, check out these sunglasses. And, he, and I was looking around and he goes, you see any of them you like? I said, man, that would look good. He said, try them on, put them on. And I look at the price, <laughs> I put it back down. And uh, I said, Jared, I gotta go. He said, okay, no problem. So I'm in worship, he comes and he hands me the bag. And the bag is this very expensive sunglasses and I had it for so long. Um, but the significance of the sunglasses is that it happened at the uh, Transform Our World Conference in Hawaii, the first one. And, the Lord, and I asked the Lord, Lord, what's the significance of these sunglasses? And the Lord said this, these sunglasses is to let you know as a reminder that I'm renewing your paradigms. I'm going to change the way you think. That's what these sunglasses refer to. He's going to renew my mind and my life in, in so many ways. I've lost those two. Well, one, the TSA guys at the airport, because I forgot the stick was in the bag. And, uh, you know, I actually shared about the testimony, what this was. And he said, they said, up to you. And I asked the Lord, should I take it back? And the Lord says, no, throw it away, because it's already in you. It was just a material object to signify the spiritual truth. And same with the glasses, because it's been over 10, 15 years that I held on to this memorial. And it's a conviction in me saying, I am what God imparted in me and what God took me to the journey. So the new memorial right now is this, if you see me wearing these necklaces, the reminder of Tahiti, Moorea, and Rapa Nui, about the mission and the vision that God has called for our lives and ministries. Your testimonies are your memorials of God's faithfulness. So please do not allow yourself to miss the point of what you have just testified. Receive it. But it goes for all of us. It goes for every single family and person in here. So you still will get a chance to testify uh, as we break bread. Share your story. You never have a chance to come up here, that's fine. Go tell somebody your share your testimony with someone before you leave. And I mean that in a very sincere way because your testimony will minister to somebody. Trust me, your testimony, everybody's testimony today ministers to us. You know, Jesus said to the Father, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God. See, when you guys testify about God's faithfulness, whether he uses us directly or indirectly in, in this family, it's food to our soul. It's fuel. It's, it's nutrition. It's sustenance. Because God is moving and working in all of our lives. That's what I love about our church is that we get real people. We get real people. A little bit gangster, but they're real. 
And you know what? I want that. I really do. I want people to be themselves in the name of the Lord. Now, obviously, we get boundaries, but, and, and we're getting close to those boundaries, but that's okay as long as we don't cross them. Okay? I'm going to hand it over to Becca. And, oh. and uh, so a couple of weeks ago, I had ex uh, expressed to all of you as uh, Ellie was gone that we were going to be dedicating the prayer room. And uh, I hope I can keep it together. When uh, Danny and Kathy came up here and shared, I was reminded of why when a group of us women fasted for 40 days in, uh, just before Easter, I asked them to come with an Ebenezer. And an Ebenezer is the memorial stone of what God showed up and did and showed you his faithfulness, something to remind you of his faithfulness. And we came together and nobody came with an Ebenezer. And, um, but my Ebenezer was the prayer room because for me, the prayer room was my sanctuary. Like I was using it every day. And, and, and Ellie and I, right now, the only ones using it. So that's why we're dedicating it. So you all know it's open for business. Um, but when you guys came up to share, I was reminded of a very broken time before that prayer room was built. That I was crying out to God in that very place ready to walk away from my marriage because it was a difficult, difficult time because this guy had so many stuff. <laughs> and uh, the years 2000 to 2009, just before you guys met him, praise the Lord, was hard. It was hard. And it was hard to stay in, but I have a woman back there that she would have stayed tooth and nail in anything, and she passed that on to us, and I was gripping, like by my fingernails, holding on to something I wasn't sure of what's going to last. And uh, if I had slippers on, I would have walked, but I walked out the house barefoot. And you guys know me, I know walked that far if I'm barefoot. <laughs> and, uh, but there was so much broken stuff and nails, and I don't know how I never stepped on any. Maybe I did, but I was so numb, I didn't feel it. And I was in that area where that prayer room is, the center of that area, hiding, crying to God. I was just like, you got to fix this, because I can't stay here any longer. And uh, I heard my kids looking for me. I didn't say anything. I heard Mapu running down the... They all was looking for me, and I didn't say anything. And then Mapu came, and I scared her, and she made me laugh. Because you guys know I like to scare people, but I didn't do that one on purpose. She just got scared, because I was there. And uh, Ellie came, and he said, what's going on? And I'm like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and, but God had him on a journey. And God heard my prayer in brokenness. And he answered my prayer, not only for him, but for myself, that I didn't even realize I was crying out because I needed help too. And what our marriage is today and what it's, I didn't realize that I wanted salvation for our marriage. I wasn't looking for y'alls because, I mean, I, I didn't know you needed help yet. I knew we needed help. <laughs> and I couldn't help you. If I helped you then, you ought to have been broken. And uh, my husband came and he grabbed me and uh, we came back in the house and we, we, didn't, we talk, tried to talk through it, but I wasn't ready. Uh, but those prayers got heard. Mm -hmm. And what he saved in our marriage, I'm so thankful, saved yours, saved others in this place, and it's still gonna do more for Polynesia than I can ever think or imagine. And so as we dedicate this prayer room, I, I mean, 
that just came out from your testimony because I was just like, God said that's the Ebenezer, and I was like trying to figure out a way to bring this in there, but, but that's why. It's because what he's called Ellie and I to in restoring marriages, raising up sons and daughters, and bringing that family unit to live in oneness for the man to be the head of his household, for the woman to come alongside and honoring him, but for the two to be a powerful unit in the kingdom of God to advance his, to advance heaven and bring heaven on earth. I know, I know what it's like to have the scars on your knees, the callus on your knees, because you're praying constantly. 2007 to 2009 was hard. I was in the wilderness, but I put a good face on because we still had something to do, and I knew God wasn't done with us here. And I refused to believe, even if he said it was Paul, I said, no, I refused to believe that. I would have still tried to hold on. But praise the Lord that because my husband chose to say yes to what God was saying to him, and he chose to allow his salvation to work out and bring healing to his orphan spirit. It brought healing to my orphan spirit so the two of us can walk in his sonship and my daughtership as son and daughter to the king of kings. And because of that, our marriage, I mean, I mean, I don't even know if I ever shared that testimony with you guys. There, I see a lot of nodding of heads. But do you remember that, Mapu? I don't know if my these I don't know if I don't know if these two remember because you guys were real young. There Taylor were, remembers because Taylor was crying. They were witnesses, they were witnesses. <laughs> yeah. Especially. Yeah, especially our children. You guys were real young, so I don't know if you remember, but Taylor remembers very much well. Uh, and she asked me about that later. And I got an opportunity to share with her that we weren't perfect. We were trying. But praise the Lord, when we put it in order and we put God first, that um and we allowed God to father us, you know, that we, we were able to live in the greater authority and, and, and identity that we have in him as son and daughter. So, so as we dedicate this prayer room, I'm sorry I had to share that. I mean, but I'm just, this is, this is the power of that room. This is the power of that room because Ellie and I have been using it almost every single day. And we have seen such tremendous breakthrough in our lives. We have seen tremendous breakthrough in your guys' lives because of the prayers that we've prayed up in that room. And we know that there's more. And God kind of tired me only hearing our voice. He like hear you guys' voice too in there. So I'm so excited that we get to lift this Ebenezer to the Lord as a memorial, not just for WMC, but for this community, for Hawaii, for nations and Polynesia beyond, because we put some flags up, praise the Lord. I can't wait to see them up, because they were still down um, yesterday, but we put some flags up in, um, as a prophetic act of where God is gonna send all of us. I mean, we've got people from those nations in this congregation right here, but we're actually gonna step foot on that land and be able to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth in those lands, and so, um, I'm so honored to be before you guys. 14 years, God has been so great. Um, I know it's been difficult for many of you. Some of you guys might be going through the struggle still, yet still hold on. Hold on. Keep holding on. Don't give up. Keep your eyes fixed on him, the author and perfecter of your faith, because he will never fail you. He will never, never fail you. Okay. So from here we're going. Okay. Uh, I, I believe it's a prophetic, I, I, I really believe the Lord led you guys' testimony with Becca, what Becca just shared, with your brokenness, and uh, that's why it's so powerful to be transparent. It, we, we, nothing happens without transparency. But also with you, what you s said, Danny, about you envision this place to be a spiritual hospital. Yeah. Um, see, the reason why I hurt Becca because I was operating as an orphan. And when you're an orphan, you don't know that you're actually hurting people. You're actually blind to the injuries that you are causing to your very own family. That's why healing is so necessary. But healing is a choice. The difference between us and from others, we just chose to get healed, that's it. But God did the healing. So I really believe this is what God is saying to us right now. That that prayer room 
is going to cause all of us to be doctors, surgeons, nurses of a hospital that, that helps people move from an orphanage to the palace. Because you cannot fulfill God's destiny unless you are healed. You can only fulfill God's destiny as a child of God, not as an orphan. We might be orphans now, but it doesn't mean that we're going to be one forever. We've got to cross that Jordan. And this is the significance of the prayer room. It's for us, our family, Hawaiian, and the nations. You ready? Okay, let's go.